This week on Engage the Sage. Hi, I'm Don Saucier. Welcome to this episode of Engage the Sage. Right now, we've just finished our semesters, just done our teaching evaluations. We're waiting to get those teaching evaluations. And what we're going to talk about today is what you should do when you get those evaluations. Now, it's important to understand our focus today is not going to be on whether or not the teaching evaluation process is perfect. We're going to talk about whether in the last couple of weeks of class, asking your students to provide information about how that class went is appropriate or not. What we're going to do is talk about the value that may come from this process as it is. So what happens in my department is one day, a week or two after classes get done, I walk into my department office and I look at my mailbox and there is a manila envelope waiting for me. This is a scary and anxiety producing moment. Now, if your university is mine, what happens is your students have a couple of different ways that they provide you feedback on their teaching evaluations. The first is they rate you on some numerical indices. Maybe they rate from one to five how an effective or excellent an instructor you are. And those numbers are fine. But where I think the real value comes in is the second way they provide us with information, and that's with the narrative comments about our teaching. I personally put a lot of stock into the narrative feedback that students tell me about my class because that is what allows me to see what I should continue, revise, or stop doing in the classes that I teach. Teaching evaluations provide data. Data or information that allows me to better perform as a teacher in my class. The information that my students give to me is their unique perspective about their experiences in my class. And I can use the patterns of that data to help me make that class better for me and for them. Now, recognizing all of that doesn't make me less nervous when I open the envelope because I want to have done well, but I also want to improve. And what I want to do is I want to remind myself before I open that envelope, try to calm myself down and say, what they're going to give me is going to help me get better. It's going to help me improve my craft as a teacher. When you're looking at this feedback, if one student says one thing, you don't know how idiosyncratic that is. You don't know how that one student had a unique experience that is not reflective of the larger population of students you might teach. If you try to make a course change based on one individual student's feedback, you risk actually messing up something that a lot of other students valued about your class. I try really hard not to chase evaluations. I try not to take all of the feedback and satisfy every single student who provided that feedback because I risk alienating all of the other students that had good experiences. I think students want to help us get better as teachers. I think they want our courses to be better, and I think they appreciate the opportunity to provide us that feedback. What we can do is help them understand how to best provide that feedback. I tell my students that particularly useful to me on their teaching evaluations is the narrative feedback that they provide. And I tell them that in that narrative feedback, it's going to help me the most when they tell me the things that they liked and why they liked them, as well as the things they didn't like or didn't get as much, and tell me what would have made that better for them. When students tell me why they had positive or why they had negative perceptions of the things they did in my class, it helps me to evaluate whether or not I should continue to do those, or if I want to revise them, maybe some ways in which I can do that. As you'll see in the clip that they're going to show you from one of my classes, you're going to see me giving my students some instructions about how they can make the narrative feedback and the teaching evaluations more constructive and therefore more useful for me. You're also going to see me talking to them about the importance of the teaching evaluation process in general. A little bit left. And today is a very important day because today we're going to do course evaluations. Why are course evaluations important? So we can help you learn. So you can help me learn. I'm glad you said that because a lot of people kind of forget that the function of course evaluations is to help these classes get better. Right? So what you're going to do, you've been through this process before, you're going to rate the class and a number of numerical metrics, and those are great. But what's most important to me is the narrative feedback on that second page, the stuff that you write. And the stuff that you write is the stuff that I will use to make this course better going forward. So if there's something you'd like that you want me to keep doing, tell me what it was and why you liked it. If there's something I did that you didn't want me to do, tell me what it was and tell me why you don't want me to do it again. And if you can think of the better thing you want me to do, tell me that. Because if you just say, this was great, I don't know why it's great. If you said, this sucks, I don't know why it sucks. So any direction you can give me to keep it being great and hopefully keep it from sucking is going to be helpful. So any honest feedback you can provide is important. By the way, I know people have told you this. These are important. I'm not the only one who reads my teaching evaluations. All of your 
people that you do your evaluations for, all of your instructors, not only do they get it, but their department has get it. So this is something that is very, very important to keep the education in K-State very high, and this is something that we're deeply committed to. Having said that, I can't be here while you do it, just in case I stare daggers at you to make your rent positive things or something like that. So I do need to step out. Slava and Bailey will practice this experience. So what you just saw was me giving my students some direction about how to treat the narrative feedback that they would give me on the TVALs so it's most useful for me in my class. You also hear me talking about these as important. I'm going to read and I'm going to value the feedback they provide. But I'm not telling them to give me positive teaching evaluations. And this is something different. I'm not giving them extra credit. I'm not giving them cookies. Because in the event that I do something like that, the information is going to be invalid. And I want honest, constructive feedback to optimize my courses. Since I've been telling my students that the narrative feedback is most important to me and that it is important to me, I've gotten more narrative feedback in my teaching evaluations. On the plus side, I've gotten more comments telling me the things they liked and why they liked them. On the other side, which is also a plus side from an information gathering standpoint, they tell me more of the things they wish I would change. But they also tell me how and why I should change them. This is very helpful for me in optimizing my classes, which is my ultimate goal in evaluating my teaching evaluations. The way we conduct teaching evaluations, it might not be perfect, but it provides me with useful information to make my classes better, and that's why I teach. I respect my students. I respect their opinions. I don't agree with every single one, but teaching evaluations are really important to me, and I'm a little hesitant, but I'm also looking forward to seeing that manila envelope in my department mailbox really soon. Thank you for joining this week on Engage the Sage. Please like, subscribe, sign up for notifications, and share on social media. We'll see you next time.